Round 17, the Japanese Grand Prix. Finally another win for Valtteri Bottas after a lightning start. Fairly routine for him after that, but um, the same lightning start can't be said of his rivals out front. So Sebastian Vettel started on pole position and he got the jitters. He got the jitters from pole and uh, let's see his start then on the grid. And at this point, you're just waiting for the lights to come on. So you, you've got your, your LEDs on the dash. So he's got the five green, the two red. That means he's on good revs for, uh, for a, a race start. You got your clutch in and uh, you've got to work, focus on dropping that as the lights go out and keeping your foot stable, which is what's creating the, the revs in the first place. And now five lights on, you're just staring at the lights, waiting for them to go out. But if we watch Seb's left hand, he just goes, preempts the lights. They were on for quite a long time and he preempted it, went and um, jumped. He did jump. So what he did though was stop very quickly as well and uh, he didn't get a penalty for this. Let's start with the first example then. Kimi Raikkonen, the very last race, it does exactly the same thing. Apart from Raikkonen jumps a long way ahead of his grid spot and he stopped before the lights go off but he's now a meter ahead of his grid spot. So that's clearly not allowed. If we go back to Austria, Kevin Magnussen got, got a penalty for a, for a false start as well. And this was again for starting in front of his grid spot. But look where the yellow line is. So he's parked up and he's just about okay on, the, uh, on his start box. But then engages first gear and he creeps and you can no longer see that yellow line. Now the yellow line isn't where you have to start from. That's just to try and give the driver a bit of reference for where the front of his car is. So when you come up, you can't see the nose of the car. It's very difficult to know where your start box is. So the yellow line is there. So you look out and you can see where to start. But now we can't see the yellow line. All that says here is that Magnussen's moved forward quite a long way. In fact, he's just rolling slightly as well as the lights go out and just getting a bit further and further. And he started in front of his grid spot. So we go back to, to Vettel's start and uh, he does clearly jump, stops it. If I pause it there where he stopped, the yellow line's still very visible. He's actually still in his grid box, just. He's got his front tires right onto that white line, so he's pushed it to the maximum, but he's also stopped. Now, he clearly didn't gain an advantage, but that's irrelevant. Kimi Räikkönen didn't gain an advantage, still got the penalty for being in front of his box and jumping the start. Uh, I still think for Vettel, this is a really tough one. The rules say you cannot move before the, the lights have gone off, before the start procedure is, is there and Vettel does, the rules don't mention what happens if you stop again. For me, there are two things for the race start. You need to be in your start box and you need to be stationary when the lights go out. Vettel is in his start box. He's pretty much stationary. If not, he's coming to a really slight stop still. That's the question mark. The FIA said fundamentally it was within tolerance. It's a really tight one. The two Mercedes drivers, I think, thought he was gonna get a penalty. I'm sure Seb at the wheel at this point thought he might be getting a penalty. Close call, but he got away with it. But it did mean he lost a place. I have to say, it's incredible he only lost one place from this because when you've got, as I was saying, the pre-start revs, the clutch, the throttle, everything, and you suddenly jump, then panic sets in. How he managed to regather it all up and actually get quite a good launch in the end is, is very impressive. Um, having said all that, it's still a poor error from pole position. And I said last week for Kimi Räikkönen, it's an error we never really see and now we've seen two in two weeks from two experienced drivers. But uh, Vettel, it must have just been a little bit nervy, a bit angsty on, on pole, first pole for a long time. When you're on pole, you've got to be leading into turn one. There's no point taking the pole position if you're going to throw it away. And sadly for him, that's exactly what he did. So the man he threw it away to, Valtteri Bottas. We'll watch his start because this was an absolute blinder of a start from Bottas. For me, it's simultaneous with the lights going out and Bottas moving. I almost wonder if he's also been distracted by Vettel's start. Vettel's jumped and Bottas has sort of gone with him and preempted the lights as well, but just timed it to perfection because his reaction time is absolutely superb. And um, that's why he takes a really unchallenged lead into turn one. It's either a slight preempting and got away with it, which is exactly what he did in Austria a couple of years ago as well from pole position, or He's just got reactions of, uh, of a superhuman and he can do it time and time again. So um, either way, brilliant start and, uh, and a great race from Bottas. Bottas sorted, Vettel sorted into second as well. But behind that, bit of chaos. Turn two and uh, it was Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc, the old rivalry back in force after Austria, after Silverstone, down to turn one. 
and uh, he also gets a good start. Cleaner side of the grid, Bottas is gone and Leclerc's on the right hand side. So Verstappen's already cleared Lewis Hamilton here and he sends it around the outside. Now into turn two, he gives, if I pause there, he gives Leclerc a fair amount of space on the inside and uh, Leclerc just washes wide into him. Verstappen, yep, he's got a bit of space on the outside to give, but he's given Leclerc a car's width on the inside and, um, and he's hit from the side into a spin and ultimately into retirement some laps later. But it's the view from Leclerc that gives us a better picture here. You can see that really slow reaction. Actually, Bottas is past him before even the end of the pit wall. So uh, Leclerc though is wary, he's already looking in the mirror at Verstappen coming down to turn one. And what he does is he's very cautious at, at turn one. He's a bit early off the throttle, Verstappen sweeps around him, and then he tries to make it all up at turn two. Here, he carries in too much speed now, and he picks up a load of dirty air from his teammate just ahead. Vettel's coming across, Leclerc's just washing wide with understeer, no more front end, then just careers into the side of Verstappen. People will say that Verstappen drove Leclerc off in Austria, which is true, but there's a subtle difference. Verstappen was at least alongside, maybe even slightly ahead of Leclerc. If Leclerc had stayed on, on the track, there was gonna be contact, but Leclerc chose to, to go off the circuit because Verstappen forced him there. Here, Leclerc was coming from a bit further back, launched in a bit and uh, understeered into his rival. Ultimately for Leclerc, five second penalty as well and some front wing damage. So uh, he had to come in and pit for repairs. Didn't do it immediately, and that incurred him another 10 second penalty because the FIA got on the radio, told Ferrari, pit your driver right now. There's a bit of a hazard having the front wing dragging against the ground. It was only a matter of time before it would break off and actually was so close to hitting Lewis Hamilton square on the helmet. It was, took his wing mirror off, but it was really, really close. So a uh, bit of a safety thing there for Ferrari. They didn't pit him. Ultimately, when they actually pitted him, that bit of front wing had broken and Leclerc was, was sort of okay to carry on. But um, for not pitting him immediately, that was a 10 second penalty. All in all, 15 second penalty for Charles Leclerc. I don't know why it took the entire length of the race to, to sort out the penalty though from lap one. I think Leclerc could feel hard done by at this point because the incident happened on lap one and um, he should have at some point been warned of the penalty through the race because it would have changed what he did at the end of the race. He pitted really near the end to try and go for the fastest lap. I'm sure he wouldn't have done that. I'm sure if he knew he had 15 second penalty, he'd have tried to build the gap to, um, to Ricardo behind or Gasly before Ricardo passed him. There's no way he would have just taken 20 seconds for a pit stop. I think there's work that can be done to make this a, a quicker process. Of course, when it's, when it's the top drivers colliding, there's more scrutiny on the decisions. But at first we were told no, no investigation necessary. Then Verstappen came on the radio and said, you gotta be kidding me. What the, where should I go? He just got the shit into my car. Then there was an investigation, then it was after the race, and ultimately, I think it would have been fairer for Leclerc, probably, to, to be warned of that penalty before, because then they would have changed their strategy accordingly. But anyway, that was one Red Bull out of the race, and uh, the other Red Bull was a little bit lucky to, to stay in the race as well after this lunge on Lando Norris. Alex Albon coming through after a bit of a slow start, and um, has a bit of a dive on Norris coming into the final chicane. If I pause it, he's actually right on the inside of Norris at the apex, even slightly ahead, but he's barreled in a lot of speed here. Ultimately ran a bit wide as well, clearly forcing Norris off the road. It's a bit ambitious, this one from, from Albon. It's not entirely dissimilar to the Kvyat Raikkonen one from Singapore. And again, similar to that, Norris, if we go on board with him, he just doesn't look in the mirror coming up to the corner. He's not expecting Albon to be there. And again, if I pause it, as soon as there's any sort of sign of the Red Bull steaming up the inside, Norris actually turns hard left to actually avoid the contact in the end. So he's desperate not to have the collision. He just didn't know that Albon was there. And ultimately Norris was, uh, was the one that lost out in this situation, had to pit and, um, and ended up getting no points. Albon carried on and um, finished a very good fourth place in the end. So got away with that one. He's clearly confident on the brakes. This time, maybe just a little bit more than he, than he could chew there, that he bit off. So risk versus reward, and he was just right on the edge of that. Got away with it, but he's got to be a bit more careful, I think. The other notable incident came on what we all thought was the final lap. Sergio Perez on Pierre Gasly. Perez had a really good drive. This one on Gasly is on the final lap. He's going for eighth position, Sergio Perez and he goes around the outside at turn one. 
outside still for turn two and then gets a whack from Gasly, who's still there in his Toro Rosso, and into the barriers. Perez sweeps around the outside of Gasly at turn one, similar to Verstappen on Leclerc. He then actually gives Gasly slightly less room than Verstappen gave Leclerc, and Gasly keeps a nose in. Perez could have given him a bit more space, but Gasly probably needed to be backing out of that one. He's pretty much fully behind into turn two. Racing incident seems fair enough, but ultimately no incident because the race was actually stopped the lap earlier and Perez, even though he's in the wall, was reinstated back into ninth place. So um, very lucky to get away with that one and uh, no investigation necessary for that because the race was done. So good drive from, uh, from Gasly and ultimately Perez to get some points as well. Gasly really strong, Honda's home race, a bit of pressure on him, but he was ahead of Kvyat all weekend and got some, got some good points there. Notable strong drive, Carlos Sainz in the McLaren. He keeps putting in these notable strong drives without any huge action to talk about. He had a, it was a quiet race, fighting with Alex Albon in the Red Bull. The Red Bull should win, it's the quicker car and ultimately on a different strategy it did. But Sainz has been really, really impressive this year and um, clearly best of the rest in the championship. He's now qualifying best of the rest as well, starting to get the edge back on Lando Norris. So um, another top drive from him. Daniel Ricciardo, some brilliant overtakes from him as well, en route from 16th to finish 6th by the time Leclerc got his penalty. Really good out of the final corner, Daniel Ricciardo. Every time we just set his opponent up, get a nice straighter drive, good rear tyres, good grip and uh, pounce on the way down to turn one. And finally, a mention for Nico Hülkenberg, who just snuck a point as well, 10th place. Hülkenberg's start was just phenomenal. And uh, with all the chaos going on at the front, Hülkenberg wouldn't have seen any of that. He was starting way down in 15. But um, when you're at the start, you just, you try and plan what you can do off the line. He probably had a plan to go for the outside. He got a great launch, Hülkenberg and then just kept going around the outside. Everyone filtered to the inside and he kept going and going and going all the way around turn one and then two. And um, it was just absolute brilliant instinctive driving. You try and plan where you're gonna go, but ultimately when it comes down to it, you've got cars going everywhere. You just pick the gap. Hulkenberg did it to perfection and, um, and it earned him a point as well. So uh, ultimately a good race for Renault, good race for Sainz. Next up, we've got Mexico. Interesting circuit. It's really high altitude, thin air. It's a fairly unique one on the calendar. You run maximum downforce, but it actually ends up being less than minimum downforce for Monza because the air is so thin. Can pull up some quirky results. Red Bull have always been good. Mercedes historically struggle a bit. Cooling could be an issue. Looking forward to it. 